Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Miss Neal's Lego Robotics. Well, yesterday's video, I told you we were going to do the golf ball tower challenge today. So I've already had two periods of robotics and it has just been phenomenal. Uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do is just go over the ground rules again, but kind of spell it out for why do I do it. And then for those of you that kind of want to copy this uh, assignment or project, um, just to give you kind of the ground rules. And then I definitely want to show you some of the pictures I've taken of some of the towers already uh, today. So for the golf ball challenge, Mr. Hino, why do you do it? Um, I do it at the beginning of the year and I do it mostly um, because I want my students to become familiar with the pieces. That's one of the reasons I have them do that. I've already broken up uh, my students into teams. So another reason I do the golf ball challenge is I want them to start to work together and collaborate with their partner. That's another reason why I do this activity early in the year. Uh, they just got their partners, so I just want them to do something non-robotic. Um, they learn about the pieces and how they get put together, but I definitely want them to see how they work well with that per other person. Okay, so now let's get into the ground rules of the golf ball tower challenge. Um, I think I told you yesterday, it's going to depend on how long your classes are. So you can mess with the number, but this is what I do. Okay. So the objective of the golf ball tower challenge is for the students um, in their team um, to build the tallest tower that they can. And it needs to hold up a golf ball for three seconds. Now, the question already came up today. Miss Gino, can I put my golf ball here, but the tower go higher? And my rule is when I measure your golf ball tower, it needs to be, I'm going to measure it to where the golf ball should sit. So if your golf ball is sitting right at this level, I'm only going to measure up to that. If you go higher, it's just, it's non-functional and I, I don't measure that extra part. So you can only use uh, what's in your kit, your Lego EV3 kit. I, I don't allow them to use sensors or motors because if their tower falls over, I just don't want those pieces damaged. So no motors, no sensors. You can use anything else in your kit though. And then um, what you, I, I give my students 25 minutes. And again, that's just because our period works out perfect that it gives me time to introduce the activity, 25 minutes. And then it gives me a chance to go around and measure and test everybody's tower. And then uh, they should be able to tear down their towers, and then all their kits are put away by the time the period's over. So you're going to have to probably experiment to see how much time you can allow your students to do that. Um, and then, the, so the winner is the team that has the tallest tower, and they were able to hold the golf ball up there for three seconds. So it's a, it's a great activity. Today I was hearing comments like, oh, that was super fun, and my teammate and I, we worked together really well. I was hearing things like, hey guys, you did a great job. Um, so it was, it was team building, it was encouraging. And, you know, and if you can get all of that wrapped into your students learning about how to work together and learning about their kit, then it was, it was perfect. So let me go ahead and show you some of the pictures I took. If you guys have any questions about it, you can hit me up in the comment sections and then I'll, I'll explain something I might have left out. Okay, so let's go to the pictures. Um, but anyway, um, have fun with this if you are a robotics teacher because it really is fun. Okay, I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Check out these pictures, but I am out. Bye.